What's up, everybody? How you doing today? It's been a little bit, I guess. I guess it hasn't been that long since the Nintendo Direct. But anyway, welcome to Brad's Bad Show about games. My name is Brad, and I am not a family guy. <laughs> and we'll get to that in just a second. But uh, there's been a lot of Fortnite stuff going on. Some of it I missed. Um... But uh, if you, as you could tell, one of the more recent things going on with Fortnite, which I think is a pretty big deal, pretty cool, even though it's weird, uh, the next set of hunters that came to the island ended up being Chun-Li and Ryu. Um, how did I just say that? Chun-Li and Ryu from Street Fighter. It's pretty big. And that's completely out of left field, in my opinion. I wasn't expecting that at all. I mean, I get now that one of the hints from Jonesy's bag being the uh, the uh, the wrist tape, the fighter's tape, that makes sense now. That was clearly me uh, meant for them. And, like, I remember looking at that clue and I was like, okay, that's, that's a fighter. So somebody who's going to be, like, known as a, like, for fighting with their fists, too, but... I was expecting, like I said, you know, people with guns, you know, or a traditional hunter or something like that. And I know, like, Chun-Li's a cop, but I don't think I've ever seen Chun-Li in any official Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter media with a gun. Because she really doesn't need a gun. I mean, when you could throw, you know, when you could throw fireballs at your opponent and spin in the air and kick them at lightning speed you don't really need a gun but um but anyway yeah that this is a fun uh little collab they're doing and it just it just goes to show like this this game is crazy so like and, and you know what's funny now is that fortnite and smash brothers are officially tied together there are now officially characters from uh that have been in smash brothers or at least one character who's been in smash brothers uh that's in Fortnite. So. Now I, I still don't think that means we're going to get a Samus skin. Uh, I hate it so bad. I would love a Samus skin. But. I don't know. Epic could be the only party in the world. That could bring Nintendo to the table. And say hey look. We want to put Samus in the game. We want to round out this, this bounty hunter season. With Samus. Especially because nobody thinks we'll do it. So. Is it possible? Who knows what the odds could be in that one? Because we both know, like, Epic would be willing to make the deal, but the question is Nintendo. And we know how Nintendo is. So, who knows? Anyway, uh, both Ryu and Chun-Li, they both have two alts. Ryu has his bearded, uh, shirtless alt as his uh, second choice. His, um... His back bling is the little walking bag, travel bag that he always carries. That sometimes you see in his uh, intro animations before a fight or cut scenes or whatever. His little travel bag he carries with him. Um, that's actually kind of cool. Like it just, uh, and you know, it's one of the things I don't like about certain back blings. It kind of just floats off of his back. It doesn't look bad. It's right there on his back. But I just hate the I hate the back blings that just literally float on their back. I just I don't like those. It's like uh it's like Joker's uh for, for DC Joker's uh Jack in the Box back bling. It's cool, but it just floats on his back. There's no reason for it to logically be there. So it, it just stuff like that annoys me, but um, and uh, both of them have a built-in emote. Uh, reuses the Shoryuken, uh, which is really cool because it uses uh, it uses a mixture of his old, you know, the original arcade theme song, and then the arcade dialogue of him doing the Shoryuken, you know. The same with Chun Li. Chun Li's alt is her alpha outfit. Of course, that's the most obvious thing, you know, they could have done with her. Um, I'm torn between which of the two outfits for her I like. Like I've been trying to get more into using Chun Li in the game she's in as a character, because like I'm trying to figure out 
when I play fighting games now, which character seems like the coolest to me? And like for Killer Instinct, at least the, the, the 2013 Killer Instinct, that's Thunder. I think for the original Killer Instinct, um, it's Cinder. But for like the Street Fighter games and Capcom versus games and all that, I want to learn. I want to do more with Chun Li because I think she's fun to play with the the lightning kicks and everything. So, but um, she looks good in here. I saw some people were complaining about her face. I think the I think they both look fine, but um. Um, of course, her built-in emote is the lightning kicks again, and she does the same thing with the music and the sound effect. Um, now, what I I got just the skin, I I just got the skin packs. I did not get the extra stuff. Like they came, they had a set a separate uh, set for two pickaxes and a glider for them to share. And the pickaxe was like, there's one pickaxe for for Ryu. It's that sign, the breakable sign from his stage. Uh, that they even added in uh, Smash Brothers, where if you kick an opponent into it or whatever, uh, it can break and then fade off the screen, which that's that's cool. It's a nice little reference to the game, but eh, that's I don't know. I would have just not given them one, but I guess they wanted to do something for them. Chun Li's is like a big, uh, like a, just a big mallet. That's like her spiked uh, wristbands that she wears in her default outfit. And again, you know, it's just, I get it. They want to try to give people something fun and give them a themed thing, like a whole outfit or whatever, which is fine. But um, if I was going to get any individual thing, maybe it would have been the E-Honda. Um, I can't remember what it's actually called, but the glider is a big balloon of E-Honda doing his like diving headbutt move. Where he flies across the stage, and then he even makes the "do scoy" uh, sound from the old games. So it's it's really funny. But uh, again, like I wasn't predicting that, but I get it. Fortnite likes to play for laughs and stuff. But uh, anyway, this is a really good set. I hope people play it. I saw some people were uh, uh, um, Max from Yo Video Games was. Very conflicted about it, because he's not interested in Fortnite, but he seems to to like he seems to like appreciate it because you know this Fortnite is now the first game, you know, in a while. If you if you don't count Marvel Infinite, which people were very mixed about Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, um, this is actually like the most attention people have given. Like this, it's very cool to see Ryu, Chun Li, and Captain America and Wolverine all in one game again. Except this time it's not a fighting game, it's a shooter game. But, uh... And Max even, like, revealed on... In a video or on stream that, uh... Epic had actually approached him. And made him an offer. To, uh... Some kind of deal to play the game. And he said he turned him down. I think he said, like, he even told him, like, Hey, this is a very generous offer and I appreciate it a lot, but... Uh, this is just not for me. And I mean, that, that's got to be a hard decision to make, especially if it's as, as good as he was saying. He's like, yeah, they offered me a wonderful deal. He said, you wouldn't believe what they were telling me. And I get it. But I mean, you got to be, you know, you got to be fair for him. And and you got to admire, you know, to, to a degree. Like, he's just like, I just don't have any interest in this game. Like, I don't like the building aspect. If it was just guns, it would be different. I think Kenny said something kind of like that, uh, too. At least Kenny did go in and buy the Chun Li and Ryu outfits, I think, and he played around a little bit of it. I tried to watch some of it, but my internet was kind of cutting out. So, so I get it. But yeah, if they, these these are still in the game, as far as like they've only been in there for like two or three days now at this point, so you still got some time to get them before they leave. I'd recommend getting these, even if you don't get the extra stuff like I didn't. I I decided not to get the the Honda. Um, glider. But moving on from that, this morning, I think it was this morning, it may have been yesterday. I think it was yesterday. Uh, the, the, um, oh crap, the Fortnite crew member pack for March got revealed. It is the Lambro skin of this guy 
with the a Fortnite unicorn head. He's got a pickaxe, a back bling, and a wrap, and you get 1,000 V-Bucks as usual. Now, where do I rank this skin? I'm, I don't know. I'm not super impressed with the skin itself, as it's just a guy with a, a horse head and like a colorful jacket. I mean, I like the colorfulness of it. I think like that all the colors, because it's, it's like a rainbow dash sort of deal with a unicorn. But I mean, it, color wise, it looks kind of cool. I, I really do like the all the colors. And I do like that there are a lot of different pieces to it. You know, one of the reasons why I think the Green Lan uh, the Green Lantern, the Green Arrow uh, set wasn't that popular is because all you got was one skin with no alts, a back bling that was fairly basic. It was his arrow, you know, quiver or whatever you call that thing. Uh, and his harvesting tool, which was a big arrow with a boxing glove on it, which that's about the best you could do for Green Arrow. But um, that was all you got. And the V-Bucks, but again, you know, still. Like, that one just felt so lacking. Even compared to the Galaxia, uh, Galaxia skin, which did have two different versions. And you got the pickaxe, you got the back bling. So that one at least felt like that was, you know, acceptable to me. And the skin was pretty cool itself. This is a little bit less cool, though I don't really hate it. But you do get, at least in this case, you know, this is the second set you we've gotten where you got a wrap to go along with the skin. So you get a little bit more. And because the season ends in March, if you are part of the crew for March, you'll get the next battle pass already paid for. So that means technically... You're getting way more than a thousand V bucks next month because if you get the battle pass, and I guess you could just go right ahead and buy the entire battle pass, pay for all the V bucks, and you'd get what is it? I guess it would be fifteen hundred V bucks. So, a lot of V bucks to earn starting next month when the new uh, battle pass comes out. So yeah, I think this is a this, this is decent. I don't know that they're. They're asking people to give their feedback on it. And uh, they're looking into maybe adding more options and different things for people who actually are in the crew. It's still a new concept. And I would like to see stuff like that. Like, I had an idea for, like, a crew member discount. If you are in the crew, you get, like, a certain percentage off of stuff in the item shop. Just knock that price a little bit down, you know? So like, and I mean, I'm not necessarily talking about like a, like a tremendous amount, but like if you buy stuff when there's bundles and you buy like one, one specific thing out of the bundle, then the shop will recalculate how much, you know, the rest of the stuff that you didn't buy in the bundle would cost you now. And it gives you a new price. So they could work in some sort of way to calculate for people who have the uh, the crew skin to um, or the crew pack to get stuff. Like if you really wanted to sell this thing, tell people you get 50% off. Imagine that. That would move some uh, crew members uh, sales, I'm sure. A thousand V-Bucks every month and everything in the item shop is half off. That'd be crazy. I don't think they would ever go for something like that, but... Um, or at least if they were to do the discount, I doubt 50%, but, um, but who knows? That's just one idea. I can't remember what else I saw. I know like they're, the toying with the idea of, you know, crew members being able to buy old stuff at a future date. So like if you miss the green arrow skin, you could maybe get it later, but that's only available to people who have the crew subscription. So I'm curious as to what all else you could do in that regard, or maybe earn final. Uh, you could earn extra experience points. Like if you if you're part of the crew, then then maybe you could have crew member coins show up on the screen. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
And those give you exclusive extra experience points when you're playing. If you go collect them. Like the regular weekly coins. So that's that's those are just some ideas right off the top of my head that they could do for people. And it would get more people to invest in the crew pack. Because right now the only reason to have the crew pack really is the skins. And now March is going to be the first, well, I guess it's technically the second time, where you, if you buy the crew uh you know, this is going to be the first time where we're going to actually see, you know, seasons cross over from, you know, when the crew, like, it's like, it started with this current season. Now we're going into another season, the second season where the crew pack has been a thing or the crew uh, membership has been a thing. So I'm curious to see what all they'll do with it. Hopefully they'll add more rewards and goodies and stuff. Maybe some free missions where you can earn extra stuff in game, you know. Maybe like uh, you get a crew thing. Here's another one just off the top of my head. Uh, you get to Fortnite crew, you get one free credit. You know, which I guess it kind of st st crosses into the V-Bucks stuff. But you could do like one free credit where you can use your free credit to get anything in the item shop. Any one item in the uh, item shop for free. But it's got to be like standalone. It can't be, you know, a bundle or something like that. Anything that's not offered at a discounted price or something like that, you can get for free. Because then, you know, it's just the luck of the draw. If, you're, if there's one particular skin you really, really, really want, you just got to be patient and hold on to that thing. But then again, that would kind of, you know... But I, I don't know. That's just sort of the, the the gamble you have to take with holding on to something like that. So if you if you maybe see something you want, but you want it a little less, but there it is in the shop, maybe you got to go for that one instead, and then just better luck next month. You know, I mean that's just it's only twelve free things a year, so I don't know. It's just ideas out there, but yeah, uh, not a bad skin for the next month. I definitely think it's a better skin than Green Lantern. Maybe I would tie it with uh with Galaxia and say that I think I those I put those about even. I'm not really completely sure. Maybe this one's a little, 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 little bit higher than Galaxia. But basically tied. I still think the Vi skin, V skin, whatever you call it, uh whatever that appropriate uh pronunciation of that name is. Um I think that one's the best. You got the most stuff with it. The two loading screens, you know, a wrap, a back bling. Uh, uh, does she have a contrail? I'm not sure she had a No, she didn't have a contrail. Um, wrap, back bling, harvesting tool, and skin, and all that stuff. You know, the, the, the skin, the back bling. The uh, harvesting tool, those all come with the Arctic Fox variants. So there was a lot of stuff in the last uh, last month's uh, thing. So looking forward to this. But now the big story that came over Fortnite immediately after the Street Fighter uh, skins hit the shop was that something got decrypted within the files for a code name for a back bling called uh, French Fry. And this was something that nobody was expecting, and we still really don't know anything else about it. But there's a lot of interesting coincidences about it. Images of various iconic funny meme moments from Family Guy were found in the uh, file notes for the codename French Fry back bling that had been decrypted when the Street Fighter skins dropped. And there's some interesting stuff in there. Like, so first and foremost, why would a bunch of Peter Griffin images be in Fortnite coding? Like, that's insane. And for a back bling. So, now this has already led to the, the I would say the common sense assumption. There's going to be a, fort, uh, a, family guy for, uh, a Family Guy Fortnite collab of some sort coming. And... Because there's no reason for this to be in the files. 
I, I, I mean, you could assume they were testing it. But why? And supposedly, uh, you can't see it here because I zoomed in to fill in the blank space. But one of the scenes that's in this thing is a scene from the chicken fight. And people have pointed out that it looks like the blood that was originally in that fight has been removed from the images. Which would imply that this is going to... Like, they've... they've somebody's taken the... the that's not implying there, but it literally is showing that somebody took the mo the time to take the blood out of the images, which implies that somebody's going to see this, that it's going to be presented, and it and in, to an audience that animated blood may not be completely appropriated uh, appropriate for appropriated. I can't talk, man. But um, that's interesting. Do I think that Peter Griffin could come to the game? I think so. I think it would be hilarious. I don't think there's anything, you know, this game is is already insane with the fact that, like, what's more crazy to Fortnite? That Peter Griffin, who has actually shot guns in the show, a show that actually does have a lot of gun violence in it, uh, shows up in a game... Like, there's even a clip of, of Peter from the show where he's playing a first-person shooter game. So, this, does that make more sense for him to show up in Fortnite or Batman? Batman, who is the anti-gun character. So, we're already off the rails in terms of characters showing up. I mean, the fact that we had an entire season after, you know, Marvel and... Yes, a lot of the superpowers were added that season so that they could be more, you know, accurate to what they really do. But still, the primary focus is still guns. It's a shooter game. But, um, I think we could see a Peter skin, and I would love to see that, to be quite honest. I think that would be hilarious. I'm all about this game being funny and fun. And again, thank... One of the things that Peter is known for doing, besides the you know goofy stuff, the goofy jokes and the meme stuff, the tripping and the ah, uh, you know all that stuff. What else does Peter do? He sings and dances a lot. I mean, one of the images, one of the scenes that's in this coding, is him doing the you know, the bar 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 is the word. Like I can see that being like a built-in emote for him. Or one that they buy, that you can buy in the st uh, the shop. But I think it would be much more appropriate if it was his signature built-in emote is him doing that dance and singing that song. But I would have it would have to be from the show of him doing it. Like I I, I couldn't it couldn't be this actual song. It would have to be Peter doing the song. That's the only way that that works in my opinion. But uh. Peter dances all the time, so that makes sense. And then one of the last ones here, like, you know, there's the fighting, there's the dancing. And then the last one is like the, the there's a helicopter of some sort. And of course, helicopters are in this game. Not right now. They're, they've been uh, vaulted. But, uh, of course, the choppers are uh, part of the game, too. So what do I think this is going to be? Like, I think this is this is supposed to be for the back bling, which, again, uh, I didn't talk about this yet. But, like, the code name French Fry it now makes complete sense. People thought it was for Five Nights at Freddy's. But think about it. French fry is actually two words. It's, you know, it's actually fr uh, two words. And first, the first word French has six letters. Starts with the letter F, just like family. And the second word uh, fry is a three-letter word that rhymes with guy. So French fry, family guy. So that it's a clever code name. They do this. We know this. So, it makes total sense that that's what they're doing there. I want Peter to be a skin, and I think that they could do it with the cell shaded graphics like they do for the uh, the two anime twins that they added, uh, Alexa and, uh, what's his name, Oren. Do it just like that. For any cartoon characters, any overly cartoon characters, give them the cell shaded look so that they look more cartoony. And uh, now what would his back bling and what would his pickaxe and all that stuff be? I don't know. I have no idea. 
But as long as he shows up as a skin, and by the way, one of the other things that is very coincidental is that some uh, people got into the code and they found that there had been some kind of upgraded animation for an extra large skin in the files because for male skins, there exists three main variants, the thin skins, the medium skins, and then the large skins. And there was one extra large skin, and that was Thanos. But Thanos isn't in the game. So here we have Family Guy stuff in a code name that that uh, clearly represents you know French Fry and Family Guy together, and then an, a sudden update for an extra large skin. I'm thinking there's a good chance it could be Peter. I, I would love it. It would make it would make for some fun videos and some funny moments. Imagine Peter's fighting Batman or Deadpool or the Joker or the Predator or the Mandalorian. I mean, Master Chief at Kratos. I mean, it's just so crazy. I want it to happen, man. But that's all we got is just speculation now. There's nothing. I haven't seen anything else for anything related to uh, Family Guy or Peter being in the game besides these images. that At least directly. So, who knows? There's a there's another portal forming on the island as we speak. Nobody knows what it's there yet. It's the code name for that is Kepler. I no idea what that could represent. Like skirmish ended up representing Street Fighter. That makes sense. The, you know the the letter play. So I'm curious what K will represent. Kepler. I think it's like Kepler, and then one of the clues left is like Space Bananas. I don't know. The clues don't... I haven't seen anything of like any official checklist of like marking off what all clues have been, you know, fulfilled yet. So, who knows? I'm I'm just very curious as to what Kepler could represent. Uh, I just can't think. I mean, going back to uh, <laughs> going back to uh, Max and Yo Video Games and 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 Epic trying to get him to play. Kepler is a six-letter K word. If that maybe could be a reference to Killer, as in Killer Instinct. Maybe, maybe. Now, I don't know which of the clues would represent you know uh, any particular character from Killer Instinct, but uh, ah, uh, that's a that's just a wild guess. It's probably, I would, if I had to bet, I would say I'm fairly sure it won't be a Killer Instinct character. So who knows what this will be. Anyway, I'm definitely want to, I definitely hope we'll see Peter. But yeah, but that's all the Fortnite talk I've got for you today. Other than I know that like the, the Epic and Apple case is starting to pick up again and they tried to get Valve involved, but Valve doesn't, but uh, Apple tried to get Valve to, to help them against Epic, I think. And Valve told them, like, we never had Fortnite on our platform. Like, Apple actually asked Valve to give them, like, the total profits, or the, the total profits, I think it was, for every game on the on their platform on Steam. Or at least a list of every game on Steam. And I'm like, dude, do you know how many crappy, just random games, uh, just junk, ja uh, junk games that people have on there? In addition to the major titles, like th what is the reason to have every single game, like a list of every single game on there? There's just no reason for that. Just I don't know, man. I I, I don't care about the case anymore. Like I said, I want whatever is best for people that can enjoy this game, and regardless of who wins, it just meh. Well, it's just meh, and I'll leave it at that. But uh, something else is something pretty cool is going on here uh, with Dragon Ball. They're doing a Dragon Ball Games Battle Hour, and I can't remember what day that is. Let me Google that real quick. What, when is the Dragon Ball Games Power Hour? Or Battle Hour, not Power Hour. Jeez. Uh... Hold on. Hold on. I found a trailer for it. Hmm. 
Let me see what it says. Uh. Right now it's going through a list of uh, professional gamers that are going to be involved in this somehow. Uh, but basically what it is, is you're going to see news and competitive gaming uh, matches of players from all the Dragon Ball games. All of the active ones. So, you'll see... Uh, I'm still trying to find a date. Um, hold on. What is the date? That I can't find it. When is the date? Why can I not find it? This is terrible, man. Apparently this has been announced for a while, but apparently it's it's fixing to happen. It's about to happen. So I'm looking. Trying to look. Anyway, it's it's going to have Dragon Ball Fighters uh I think uh oh it says here uh from Dragon Ball Hype DBS Hype on Twitter uh it's on March 7th. So it's a little bit away. About two more weeks. Uh apparently they're going to have news about Dra uh Fighter Z uh Fighter Z. I see I know not to call it that. Uh, Fighters, Xenoverse 2, uh, DBZ Kakarot, uh, Dragon Ball Legends, and more stuff. So, I think even maybe the digital card game, or the mobile card game, I think is what it is. Uh, it says there's going to be new stuff revealed for all of the games. So, we already know some of the stuff that's coming. Like, uh... Like, I don't know much about, like, Kakarot. I assume they're going to, uh go further into the Dragon Ball Super story there. I don't know anything at all really about Dragon Ball Legends. Uh, DBZ, Xenoverse, DBZ Xenoverse 2. I know that this particular tweet here I'm looking at from Dragon Ball Hype uh, has a picture of God of Destruction uh, Top or Topo, whatever you want to call him. Uh, that's supposed to be... He's supposed to be coming with PyCon soon. Uh, and then Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta for Fighters. So the question, I guess, would be: I think Gogeta is supposed to be the last character of the fighters' uh, current pass, and then I assume they'll announce the next wave of fighters, uh, the next battle, this next season for fighters. Uh, there, maybe reveal the next thing for Dragon Ball Xenoverse, which I have been playing through, uh, because there's supposed to be a there was a poll asking who the next. Like, if you could pick the next uh, representative to show up in Xenoverse 2 from, uh, from Super, who would it be? And the three choices that they had asked people were for Ultra Instinct Omen Goku, Bergamo, the big blue wolf guy from Universe, uh, what was it? Universe 9, and then Pride Trooper Dispo, the guy who looks sort of like a, a rabbit version of Beerus. Uh, I think if it were up to me, and th there was also something to do with uh, GT Vegeta. I think he may be coming for sure, but uh, I'm not I'm not entirely sure there. Uh, I just <laughs> yes, see, I'm doing it again. I said he may be coming for sure, and I said, uh, but I'm not sure about that. Oh boy, I'm just saying words. Words are coming out, and I don't know how to stop them. Uh, something about Dragon Ball GT Vegeta. 
But uh, if it was up to me between the other three, between Omen, Goku, Bergamo, or Dispo, I'd pick probably Bergamo because we already have full Master Instinct, Ultra Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku in the game. And even though I think that the Omen form looks cooler, I think the silver hair is a little over the top as it makes it just feel like another Super Saiyan form to me, even though it's not. It's supposed to be the opposite of Super Saiyan. But, uh... Like, I would have I would have been completely fine with it being mostly the focus on the eyes. Like, Super Saiyan transformations, yes, their eyes change shape and color too. But I would have much preferred a much more, you know, subtle transformation where Goku's hair maybe just stands up just a little bit. It's a slight silver, you know... A uh, little hint of silver in Goku's hair from the aura around him. Not that his hair is actually completely turned silver... But I guess now it makes sense because, like, that matches the angels. They always exist naturally within a state of Ultra Instinct. So it's more or less that he's becoming like them instead of, you know, something else. You know, instead of it just being that. But I think they could have still, you know, like the Ultra Instinct thing. Like, they could have done that without the hair color change, in my opinion. I think Omen does look better, but I would rather have Bergamo just because he looks more unique you know, it wouldn't be another Pride Trooper. And Dispo does look very much like uh, Beerus and Champa to a lesser extent. So I would go with Bergamo. And I do hope they keep uh, adding characters like that to the game from the Tournament of Power. Because there were so many characters. Like, Kefla's in the game, isn't she? Yeah. I'm pretty sure Kefla's already a DLC character for the game. Like, I would like to see just Kale by herself. Cauliflower. Add them both separately. I mean, I wouldn't add every character. Some of those characters were clearly throwaway characters. Well, you could add the three wolves. The trio de danger, or however you pronounce those guys. You know, Bergamo, what was his name? Uh, Basil and uh, Lavender. You could add those three. Because they were actually a trio. You wouldn't have to add the other characters from that universe because they really didn't do much. I mean, you guess you could and just charge people money. I'm sure plenty of people would be willing to pay for that cat girl and that bunny girl from that universe. But uh, like the two say the two uh, blah, 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 the two Namekians from Universe Six that were on Cauliflower and Kaba's and Hit's team. Add those two guys. That'd be cool to be able to have those two Namekians fighting against Piccolo and Gohan in the game. Try to recreate some of those Tournament of Power uh, moments. Why wouldn't you want to do that? People love... Like, people want to be able to recreate those classic moments from the show. I mean, it's the last part... It was the last saga of the animated run of the show. Forgetting the Broly movie. But, uh... Yeah, that was a big moment for Super. That whole tournament was big. Yeah, it dragged. And it was a very long arc. But, I mean, it was a big moment. The tournament is huge. So, yeah, I'd go ahead and do more for that. Uh, don't know anything about the other games, the card game or whatever. And, and personally, and no offense to the people who are going to be playing this competitively or for, you know, for the show. But I'm just personally not interested in the competitive play. I'm sure there will be plenty of people who are you know, good luck to all those people playing. It's just me. I'm more of a casual gamer. I just, I like what I like because I like to play it. So no offense to those guys. I'm not, I'm really not that worried about the competitive uh, thing, but I do hope everybody who does play, you know, enjoys it and has fun. But uh, that's all I got there. And then before we get out of here, uh, I'm going to go into a little bit of a rant because I saw this before I started the show. But uh, the same old song and dance has returned yet again. And it's a politician in Illinois, I think it is, wanted to ban video games, violent video games, uh, because it's leading to carjackings in the real world. Specifically, this seems to be about Grand Theft, uh, Grand Theft Auto V, I assume... I don't play the Grand Theft Auto games. Just I just haven't played them. Uh, nothing against them. But again, like like always, like I said, this the same song and dance. We always see this. 
where something somebody commits a crime and rather than going after the crime we got to go after something that depicted a cr- a crime within a fictional world and that's our target let's go get the video game you know not the person actually doing the crime we can't we can't distinguish anymore it's just so it's so dumb that we still have these just such a waste of time. Just such a waste of time. It's just like there is no evidence. Like there have been countless studies over and over again about how like th- there's just no direct correlation between playing a violent video game and it causing you to become violent of course people's emotions get riled up nobody likes to lose and people do get emotionally invested sometimes in their stuff but it if you play ga- grand theft auto it's not going to change you it's not going to ch- fundamentally change who you are like, if it does, then you have something, like, you have way deeper issues than the fact that you played a game. Or you watched a TV show, or whatever. It just, and science has backed this up forever now. This is a done deal. I don't know why we're t- still doing this. And for the record, this is a Democrat pushing this, not a Republican. The Republicans are almost tr- always the ones who push for stuff like this. Every time there's a shooting in this country, it's the Republicans who go say, you know what, maybe we should ban video games. That's the problem. The problem is not the real guns, it's the fake guns. People are watching people use fake guns on TV and decide to go use their real guns instead of, so instead of, like, and then see that even if you were in the camp that's like, no, we have to have our Second Amendment. We can't, we can't ban any gun, whatever. Even if you were in in that camp, you couldn't, like, why would you, What does a video game have to do with it? Thankfully, this seems to be one of the very few issues where people on both sides of the political aisle agree that, for different reasons, I think, but they agree that stuff like this needs to, no, no, you can't ban violent video games. It's just, it's not, one side will tell you it's because, hey, this is big government stepping in. Don't, don't, they can't tell us what we can and can't enjoy. And the other side will be like, well, yeah, that's like this video games are art. They are expression. They are people telling stories. You should be able to, to uh, uh, do stuff like this. Like, it, it's, it's sort of, at the end of the day, it's sort of the same argument, but I think it's coming from different places. But, uh, but like I said, you know, it doesn't matter. Democrat, Republican, doesn't matter. A bad idea is a bad idea. And then it just is just dumb. It's just dumb. Especially because you really read about what like what they're gonna do with the, the supposed uh, change to the law is it actually redefines violent video games to include like vehicular crimes. So you could be playing an old race game. <laughs> And if it depicts you stealing like a tire off of it or something, then that would be that would that would be defined legally as a violent video game. So you wouldn't actually so you could theoretically have a game out there where you don't actually harm anybody, but you stole you stole a car or you damaged a car, now it's a violent video game. And that's just dumb. And it also change it uh, the 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 legal handling the handling of a handling of a case of this legally would be to change like like I think I think in Illinois like it's of course it's illegal to sell uh, it's illegal to sell uh violent video games to kids and you can be a fine like a thousand dollars for it or something like that but the law would change it to from restricted sales to forbidden sales and that would be of all violent games so think about that. That would include any video game, by the way, like the legal definition would be any simulated physical violence, but it would also include psychological violence too. So technically, any game that you think might cause somebody to be or depict 
physical distress, or not physical distress, but maybe even mental distress, would be classified as a violent game. If a character in the game is depicted as being bothered by something, you know, that's, that's crazy. It's too vague. I mean, and technically, and think about this, you could, like, I guess you could even roundabout say that, like, you could ban Pokemon games for being violent. It's throwing animals against each other and that would that might disturb some people so therefore it's 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 wrong or it might some of the characters in the game don't like the thought of pokemon battling each other so it's wrong and it's banned because of carjacking and the example i used on twitter was like so you could be somebody who likes to play killer instinct which is a violent game or a dragon ball game and because the legal definition of violent game means it could uh even currently uh includes uh you know, simulated violence or against a uh, simulated violence against a person or against another human being or whatever. Like, in 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 answer to carjacking, you'd ban Killer Instinct and Dragon Ball. How does that fix that problem? It doesn't. That's And that's the point. Instead of trying to fix the problem, it's all about just... I'm going to flex my political muscles. It's just so dumb. I mean, and it's just such a tired... We have this argument, it feels like, every, like, four or five years. It's just sad. When Donald Trump was the president, they tried the same thing. There was some big shooting. I can't even remember which one, because that's how often they happen in this country. But Donald Trump tried to take that same stance. We're going to ban the violent video games. And a lot of the Republicans, like I said, Republicans are usually the ones to take the stance of ban the bad content. They love to do that. They'll tell you they they tell you they're against that stuff, but they, they they're against censorship, and and you know big government controlling what you can see and say and all that stuff. But reality is they they don't care. They would ban anything. Republicans would ban anything that they disagree with, and they regularly push for that. But um. What happened when Trump was president and he was throwing away, we need to do something about these violent video games. What happened? All the game companies got together and put together a presentation and went to the White House. They sent representatives to the White House. And I would assume what happened was they showed him the science, which, of course, is like, again, for years and years now, they've said that there is no direct correlation between violent video games and violence in and of itself. They And they probably... uh. And my figure, my thing and what they probably showed him that won him over was their bottom line. Because when you look at what some of these uh, big game studio game uh, releases are making, they're doing, some of these video games are making more money than Hollywood blockbusters. Millions and millions of dollars. And that probably convinced him more than the science. It's like, oh, dang, these guys are doing pretty well for themselves over in the gaming world. Like, I, I respect you. I respect what you're doing. That's probably what happened. They probably just like, no. And, I mean, they I mean, they show them how many millions of people play. Like Fortnite. Fortnite, I hate to bring Fortnite up all the time. Fortnite, one of the most popular video games in the world. It's a shooter game. Kids play this game. I, I can't think of a single case of where somebody has tried to tie Fortnite to an actual crime in real life. I have not heard of that. I'm not saying, that, and and I will, I will throw this out there that I could be wrong, and I just may not have seen anything like that. I don't mind being wrong, but I personally have not seen any specific case where a politician or police, you know, blame, said Fortnite caused this specific crime to happen, and it's just not out there. Like I said, this happens every few years. So politicians get together and decide we need to, to start like, oh, this is violent. We can't show it. I mean, there's no reason. It's just There's just no, there's nothing to back this up. And I just wish, um, I was fixing to say something else about it. And oh God, what was it?
but yeah, anyway, like when, when the last time this happened, they backed off of it real quick. And thankfully, I think that there are people on both sides of this. Uh, that it's just a done deal. They're not going to ban games. The, I think the Supreme Court already settled that this is not like this is protected speech. Effectively, violent video games are still art and free speech. And people are allowed to depict violence for their art, their fiction, their expression. Because it's not real. Same thing with music, TV shows, books even. Like, some of our kids' favorite fairy tales in their original states are some of the most graphic things you'll ever read. Like, when you think about The Little Mermaid, you think about Disney. Well, you should think about uh, the original version of that story as it was originally written... Where instead of having a magic spell uh, steal Ariel's voice away, she has her tongue cut out. And, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I have not read the original version of this, but f by everything I've heard about it suggests that instead of at the end of the original Little Mermaid tale, where instead of getting with the prince that she fell in love with because her dad came around, she actually dies so, yeah, great fairy tale stuff that we let our kids, you know, that we, we take inspiration from. And like even stuff like Romeo and Juliet, st there's stuff in that and just so much classic reserve, like, like, or like praise literature that's incredibly violent, incredibly dark, incredibly like just also creepy and stuff that we have let slide because it's written and it's classic. And look... This revered writer, William Shakespeare. I can't believe what he wrote. And there are, there are actually people who say stuff like that too, by the way. But anyway, it, it's just dumb. This is a dumb argument. It's done. It's dumb and it's done. It is done. Nobody agrees with this. So, more than likely... They'll throw it out. They'll tell you this is a First Amendment thing. And they'll probably say there's no correlation to violent video games. Uh, and crime. And I think what I was going to say earlier was like, if you ban all these violent video games, well, then you're just taking away out, uh, you know, thing other things that people could be doing besides stealing cars. So you're defeating your your, your purpose. I would much rather people be playing Grand Theft Auto than, or Killer Instinct, or Dragon Ball, or Mortal Kombat, or any other violent video game, than I would they be outside stealing their neighbor's car. Which is again, you know, a weird thing, you know. Uh, before I before I shut down for the uh, for this episode, uh, it's it's very weird that you know gamers are sort of depicted as these shut-ins who never leave their house. They're losers. You know, basically just weebs, if you want to just sum it up in one word. You know, they're the recluses. They don't have real lives, so they play video games all the time. But then they also want to say that gamers are the ones who are like, uh, are it's the gamers who are behind the organized crime. That's what's going on. Like, how? Like, we can't be shut-ins who never leave the house and also be running, like, elaborate... Uh, car theft schemes like that's just i know that's not that's not a really great argument but it's just more like the fact that the people will throw any label on the people they want whether it makes sense or not and it's just i don't know i, I just get tired of seeing this argument over and over again because nobody nobody wants this and it's it's just i don't know what else to say nobody agrees with this nobody wants this so I just want to throw that out there because uh, it popped up in my feed on Twitter as I was about to do this. And here lately, like there's been other like stories and stuff that I wanted to talk about. And then time passed and I forgot to talk about it. And then by the time I remembered to talk about it, so much time had passed. I felt like it'd be just, you know, not a just pointless to bring it up. Like, there was something, like, I'll just casually mention this and then get out of here. Like, there was something about a, some kind of 
war game that's based on the Iraq war where the developers saying, well, we're, we're not trying to make a political game here. And I'm like, uh, but you're making a game based on a war that is actually still going. So what? And besides, it's a war, a real war. It is inherently political. So, I mean, I was going to get into that, but it, it's enough time has gone over and I just summed it up pretty good anyway. But yeah, can't ban the violent video games. It's not going to solve the problem that you've got. But yeah, thanks for uh, listening to me rant again and talk about Family Guy and Fortnite. Uh, there will be some interesting stuff happening this week, I guess, with uh, uh, Pokemon Day is coming up. We officially have passed the 35th anniversary for The Legend of Zelda. So, But we are still in the middle of the... We are towards the end now of the Mario 35th anniversary celebration. That ends... That six-month celebration ends in March. Or at the end of March. So once we get past the 31st and, Mar and uh, Nintendo, you know, yeets Mario into the sun and we never see the Mario Brothers again... Uh, I'm expecting them to go all in in the Zelda stuff because that focus will be gone. It'll be a new fiscal year for them and they'll have no reason not to. So expect that. Expect some Pokemon stuff in the next few days for Pokemon Day. Could have a lot more stuff to talk about next time. Here's to Peter Griffin in Fortnite. Hope you enjoyed listening to me and we will see you next time.